Guys, you've got Mr. Everything English. Welcome to another video. Now, guys, in this video, we are doing something that I didn't think was much of a demand, but it's becoming more of an issue day by day. And this is unseen poetry. So, guys, what is the crack with unseen poetry? How do we tackle unseen poetry? Guys, this is my first advice. Don't make it a beast in your head. You know unseen poetry, because it has the word unseen in front of the word poetry, people get scared, like we get scared. Oh my God, it's a poem that I've never seen before. It's a poem that is somewhere online and I don't, I've never read it before. Oh my God, they're going to surprise me with a really hard poem. Guys, relax, relax, relax. What is the important thing about being able to tackle the unseen poetry question? It's very simple. If you've been spoon fed by your teachers, and they've stood in the front of the class and they've gone over every single poem but you've never been able to do it by yourself then you're stuck but if you were taught by your teachers how to analyze poems and now you're able to analyze poems to some extent then you're going to be okay because unseen poetry guys the only skill well no the primary skill that it tests in my opinion is your ability to analyze poetry. Now, do you have to understand every single line of the poem? No, you don't. You only have to understand enough of the poem to pull and produce an answer. Now, let's go over the basics. The unseen poem poetry question in the AQA exam board is worth 24 marks. Now, for a 24 mark question, you are spending 30 minutes. In 30 minutes, I recommend that each student should be doing three paragraphs, 10 minutes each. And this essentially means that you only have to understand three parts of the poem to answer the question. Now, normally for English literature, you are marked on AO1, AO2, AO3. For unseen poetry, you are not marked on AO3. You are only marked for AO1 and AO2. AO1 is the quality of your point and the quality of your quote. AO2 is how well you analyze the effect of either language, structure, and form. And that's it. And we do that in each of our three paragraphs. Now guys, I repeat, you have to be able to analyze poetry to some extent. So if you don't know already, my advice would be go and learn poetry specific structural devices like in German, like Cesora, like Volta. Go and learn a couple of language devices. If you don't know what paragraphs are called in poetry, learn it. They are called stanzas. Once you've got a bit of knowledge of the basics of poetry, then you should be ready to analyze a poem. Now, for those of you aiming for a grade seven, eight or nine, it doesn't matter too much about what you actually pick out. What it matters about is what do you do with what you pick out? Now, in this video, guys, where's my poem? Guys, in this video, I'm going to be analyzing this unseen poem. It's called An Alpine Letter. And what I'm going to do is this, guys. I'm going to read the question. We're going to read the poem. I'm going to pick out my three quotes. Then on the board, I'm going to plan my three paragraphs. I'm not going to write out the three paragraphs because this video will end up being really, really wrong. And I've already got a video about how to write a pretzel paragraph. So once I finish my plan, if you want to know how to write out the paragraphs, then I would advise you all to watch that video. All right, guys, let's begin analyzing the unseen poem. As here is our poem. The poem is called Alpine Letter. And the question is, how does the writer present ideas about love? How does the writer present ideas about love? Let's read it first. Love, if you asked me yesterday, I'd say love is a sore that amputates the heart. I'd call it my disease. <coughs> I'd call it my plague. But yesterday, I hadn't heard from you. So call it the weight of light that holds one soul connected to another or a tear that falls in all gratitude, becoming sea. Call it the only word that comforts me. The sight of your writing has me on the floor. The curve of each letter looped about my heart. And in this ink, the tenor of your voice. And in this ink, the movement of your hand. 
The Alps now cut their teeth upon the sky and pressing on to set these granite jaws between us. Not a mile will do me harm. Your letter in my coat will keep me warm. How does the writer present ideas about love? Now guys, if we look at the poem, we have four different stanzas in this poem, guys. In this poem, guys, we have four different stanzas. Now, I am going to divide my poem into three sections. Here, guys, is section one. Here is section two. And here is section three. Now, each section will eventually form my writing. What do I mean by that? At the beginning of this video, guys, I said to you all that we are aiming to do three paragraphs. That is what I said to you guys, that we are aiming to do three paragraphs. My quote from paragraph one will come from stanza one. My quote for paragraph two will come somewhere over here. And my quote for paragraph three will come in the final stanza. Why have I done this? I have done this because I want to show the examiner that I'm able to understand the entire poem. So rather than getting all my quotes from the first stanza, I'm going to get one from there, one from there, and one from there. And this is something that I would like you all to make sure you do in your own exam. Now, this poem, love in the first stanza is very, very negative, And then it becomes positive, And then it becomes obsessive. Now, let's find my quote from the first stanza. Love, if you asked me yesterday, I'd say love is a sore that amputates the heart. Love it. That's the quote I'm going to use, guys. Love is a sore that amputates the heart. Now, if you don't know, guys, the technique that's being used there is indeed a metaphor. Now, I'm not going to analyze my technique for now. For now, I'm just going to pick out my three quotes. Now that I've got my quote, I'm not going to bother with this section now. I'm going to move on. Now I need a quote over here. Um, so call it a weight of light that holds one's soul connected to another or a tear that falls in gratitude. The sight of your writing has me on the floor, the curvilege looped about my heart, and in this ink, the tenor of your voice, and in this ink, the movement of your hand. Um, I am going to use, I am going to use, I am going to use this quote here, that the love is the only word that comforts me. That the love is the only word that comforts me. There's a massive juxtaposition. There's a massive contrast from this to this. Now that I've got my quote, let's move on to paragraph, well, not paragraph, to stanza three. The Alps now cut their teeth upon the sky and pressing, not, and pressing on to set these granite jaws between us, not a mile will do me harm. Your letter in my coat will keep me warm. For the last one, guys, I am going to use the last line of the poem. Your letter in my coat will keep me warm warm those are my three quotes and that's it guys i'm done with the poem did i break down every single line of the poem nope do i have to nope is it important nope because it's an unseen poem so long as i've got three quotes to answer this question that is enough to for me to produce my response i repeat guys you don't have to sit there trying to figure out what every line of the poem means Normally, the question will give you an idea about what the poem is about. From the question, I know this poem is about love. Therefore, let me find three quotes about how love is shown. All right, guys. So now that I've got my three quotes, now let's plan my three pretzel paragraphs. Okay, guys. Now, here we have a pretzel paragraph on the board. Now, the quote is from stanza one. It says, love is a sore that amputates the heart. Now, what technique has been used here? So guys, the technique that's being used here is indeed a metaphor. Now, what's going to be my point? My point is that love is presented as violent. So I've got my point, I've got my reference, and I've got my technique. Now, what am I going to zoom into? Love is a sore that amputates the heart. I'm going to zoom in to the noun sore, that love is a sore. Now is the important part. What's the effect? That love is a sore that amputates the heart. Guys, love can change you forever. Love can change you forever is the first effect. Second thing, guys, love, now remember, this is just a plan. This is just a plan. Hence why I am doing it like this. That love is not easy. It's difficult. A sore as chops, it completely destroys everything in its path. Now, the noun sore. 
Love is sharp. Therefore, you want to be careful. Now, what's my link, guys? My link, as always, I will say therefore, and then I will take it back to the top. Now, guys, look, this is how I plan for unseen poetry. You simply want to plan three paragraphs like this. So my point is that love is violent. My quote is that love is a sore that amputates the heart. This is a metaphor. And what do we learn from the metaphor? That love will change you forever and that love is not easy. Now we're going to zoom into the quote and we're going to zoom into the noun sore. And the noun sore shows that love is very, very dangerous. So be, it is sharp. So be careful. Then I end my paragraph with a link that goes back to the top. This is simply because I want to make sure that I'm on task. Now, if we're looking at my paragraph, guys, if we're looking at my paragraphs, the P and the R, this here, guys, this is A01, and this here is A02. A01, guys, remember, is the quality of my point and the quality of my quote. A02 is the effect of language, structure, and form. Now, guys, here you have my paragraph completely planned. And all you want to do is plan three of those paragraphs. Now, earlier on in the video, guys, I said to you all that I will plan three paragraphs and you can write it out yourself. I've had a change of heart. I think it's more beneficial if I plan one paragraph and then you plan one and then you plan the next two paragraphs at home. And then on this side of the board, guys, I will write this paragraph out. Now, I'm going to throw out a disclaimer, guys. Obviously, the board is massive, so my detail isn't going to be that much because I'm trying to fit my entire paragraph on that side of the board. Okay, let's begin. Let's begin. Um, in the poem, love is presented as... Can you guys see that? Can you guys see that? Yep, love is presented as being... Extremely violent with the ability to destroy lives. That is my point complete. This is clear when we learn. how love is a sore that amputates the heart. The use of the metaphor, and there is my technique complete. All right, guys, look how quick I'm working through the pretzel paragraph plan. The use of the metaphor makes it clear that love, that love can alter a person forever. However, this alteration is not good as you are being amputated. You are losing a part of you forever. Okay, guys, now there is my, guys, there is my first effect. Now, I could do more detail, but I'm going to move on simply because I've not got much space left on my board. Now I'm going to move on. Furthermore, now I'm going to zoom into the noun. Furthermore, when we zoom into the noun, so it is clear 
that love is painful. A soul like love is sharp and dangerous. How much space have I got left, guys? How much space? Uh, why is my writing going bent? It's sharp and dangerous. Let me straighten it out. A sword like love is sharp and dangerous. Therefore, the writer is making it clear that love should be handled with care. As a result, all right, that's my second effect done, and now let's link it back to the top. As a result, in the poem, love and violence go hand in hand. And can you all see that? Ooh, okay. And there I have now run out of space, guys. And there is the end of my paragraph. Now, guys, there you have it. There you have an unseen paragraph plan and an unseen paragraph written out. P-R-T-E-Z-E-L. In the exam, guys, you should be spending 10 minutes on one paragraph. You have 30 minutes to do three of these. And guys, that's it. There's nothing more to it. That is how you tackle an unseen poem for the exam. So step one, learn the techniques and learn the ways of analyzing a poem. Number two, practice with different poems. See if you can pick out and John, see if you can pick out a simile, a metaphor. Then look at questions. How is love presented? How is death presented? How is life presented? And then plan some paragraphs and then write some paragraphs. 10 minutes per paragraph, three paragraphs, 30 minutes. And that's it. That is what you do for the unseen poetry question. I will end the video here, guys. As always, thank you for your support. It's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.